Hi, welcome to my fourteen tutorial on Erlang. Today we're going to write a function that can receive messages, a concurrent function. Um, basically, um, I'm going to be using a pre-written function called factorial and factorial recorder. So let's get started. The name of our function is going to be message rec. Takes nothing in return. And now we want to create a receive. What's wrong with my spelling today? Receive and at the end of it and just back. Now when the message arrives at this process, the system will try and match the pattern. If none of the pattern matches, the message is then saved for a little processing and the process waits for the next message. Uh, this process runs parallel with the caller itself. So as soon as you send the, a message to this process, you can continue working on whatever you're working and this is going to do what it's meant to do if the pattern matches. So our first pattern will be factorial and it takes in an, and it receives an argument integer. We want to write down the answer in the screen so IO format and write in the string factorial for first argument P squiggle P is second argument squiggle P and then the next line and we're gonna give you set of argument a list of arguments should I say so the first argument is going to be integer and the second argument will be the function call to factorial the first factorial and the first factorial takes in an integer and an accumulator so the integer will be the int and the accumulator will be one and we call back the message rec function so we can wait for another message after this work is done the next pattern is going to be factorial recorder so let's just copy and paste this perfect factorial first of all we want to create an io device But yeah, we have the IO device which creates uh, a DAT file, CONCC, and we want to write method on it. The write mode, should I say. And we want to call the function factorial. We want to call the function factorial recorder. And we give it the INT, the integer, one as the accumulator, and the IO device is the IO device we've created here. And afterwards, we want to let the the the, the caller know that factorial recorder is done. And after that, we want to close the I/O device. File the close or close the file. File close. And like the previous pattern, we want to wait for the next message. Just in case we don't have none of the pattern matches it's going to go straight to other which is going to notify the caller that the invalid match for whatever you sent in which is in order and that's the end of that and after this oh don't forget to export the function it's message receive or receive and it takes zero perfect and these other functions are all private functions and the uh, message rec is the public function since we're exporting it out now all you just have to do is load your erlang shell so now that we have our erlang shell running first thing we do is we change directory to the location of the easy module file and then we compile the easy module file 
and the next step is we create a PID, a concurrent process that we evaluate fun. And funds are basically anonymous functions because spawn. So fun the module which is easy and the function we want in the module. So message REC zero parameter. And spawn gives PID the process ID. So PID contains the process ID. Using this, we can now send a message to the process. So let's send a message to the process PID. Message is going to be, we have to match the pattern factorial. So we want to match one of the patterns and get factorial of 10. And factorial of 10 is 3268800. Now the next version, the next pattern match is factorial recorder. Basically it's going to create a file and it's going to log all the factorials inside the file. So factorial recorder. So the file will be created in the Erlang.io folder. The Erlang.io folder. So let's see this in action. What we want is factorial recorder of 10 as well. And we have factorial recorder done. And in the folder, we have the conc.dat file, which contains the results. And here it is. Current factorial log 11090 and it goes on. The next part is let's call something we actually don't have. For example, factorial recorder Z. Invalid match for factorial. So um, let's call something really big. So we can see it doesn't actually crash the shell itself since the process is running parallel to the sender. So well, we can put another zero there. This is probably going to take ages. So let's continue. I equals 10 or 12. As you can see that's still going on while this is still doing its thing in the background. And hopefully it's not going to take forever. I'll see if I can hold until it's done. And the answer to that is, uh, yeah, that's the answer to that. And it goes on for ages. Thanks for tuning in today. See you next time.